All right, everybody, we're going to talk about a concept that is very, very commonly tested on the USMLE, and it's really something that boils down to memorization. These questions are so commonly tested, uh, and I guarantee you, if you're taking step one, you're going to get at least one question, maybe two. And if you don't memorize these drugs, you're going to get that question wrong. So usually these questions are pretty straightforward. Um, so as long as you can memorize these drugs, uh, you will be in pretty good shape. Uh, so what we're talking about here is something called the P450 system. You've probably heard of it. What it is, it's a set of enzymes in the liver and they are primarily responsible for getting rid of drugs. Technically, they metabolize drugs, and so they may take a pro-drug and turn it into an active metabolite, but usually, uh, for our purposes, what they do is they take an active drug and they turn it into an inactive metabolite. This is part of the phase one metabolism of drugs. Uh, and so this does happen in the liver. Now, there is a difference between an inducer and an inhibitor. An inducer of an enzyme, of the P450 enzymes, rev up the system. And so what would we expect to happen? Well, if we induce the P450 enzymes, one of them or multiple of them, then what we would expect is whatever drug is being metabolized by that P450 enzyme, the levels of that drug are going to drop faster than what we would normally expect. So what drugs are we talking about here? Well, there are a lot of different P450 enzymes, and you'll hear them uh, referred to as uh, as like CYP. So like CYP2D6 or CYP3A4. Those are all cytochrome P450 enzymes. The classic drugs that are given are going to be beta blockers, warfarin, oral contraceptives, statin, theophylline, and antipsychotics. But there are a lot, okay? So those are not the only ones. Those are the ones that are more likely to come up on the exam, though. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why that is in a little bit. So the mnemonic for the P450 inducers is scrap GPS. Scrap GPS. Now, it's not going to be enough to just know that. You're going to need to know what the drugs are because, as we're going to see when we talk about the inhibitors, which do the opposite, uh, there's a mnemonic and some of the same letters will show up. So you need to know what these letters are also corresponding to. All right, so let's run through these uh, drugs that are P450 inducers. So the first starts with S, and it's sulfonylureas. Now, as you know, sulfonylureas are given as part of a treatment for type 2 diabetes because they increase the amount of insulin that is released by the pancreas. C stands for carbamazepine. Carbamazepine or tegretol. Carbamazepine, I think I spell that right. Okay, carbamazepine or tegretol is an anti-epileptic drug. So it is used for the treatment of epilepsy, but it's occasionally also used for the treatment of bipolar, and it may be used also for peripheral neuropathy. Next, R, it's rifampin. So we don't see this one as much in the U.S. because it is used for tuberculosis, and we don't run into that as much here. Uh, so that's the primary usage for it. It is occasionally used in some opportunistic diseases for AIDS and uh, also has some usefulness in the treatment of Legionnaire's disease. But usually you'll see this uh, in the treatment of tuberculosis. Next, we have alcohol. Okay, now this is confusing here, so I want you to pay close attention. When we're talking about alcohol as a P450 uh, related, uh, related medication or substance, we're talking about chronic alcohol use. Okay, so alcohol used by an alcoholic. And we're going to see with the inhibitors, alcohol as far as binge drinking will be an inhibitor. So you need to know the difference. P stands for phenobarbital. It's a barbiturate not used too often anymore. Phenobarbital. Next, we have griseofulvin. That is an antifungal that is primarily used for uh, tinea infections. 
And then next we have phenytoin, very common drug. Uh, that's also an anti-epileptic, uh, so uh, you'll want to know that. And then this last one is S for St. John's wort. Now, I could easily see a question testing St. John's wort because it's an over-the-counter supplement, an herbal supplement, so you're not necessarily able to dictate whether a patient is taking that. Uh, they could go to a vitamin shop and just grab some, and then all of a sudden now uh, their, their medication levels are out of whack. So you'll want to know that one. Okay, so what are we talking about uh, with these inducers? What we're talking about is that a patient takes an inducer, and they're on one of these classic P450 substrates, so a medication, and the result is that the medication level is going to go down because they've rubbed up the system. Now on the exam, you're most likely going to be asked about some kind of medication where if the levels are too low, it, sh it presents, it causes something to happen. So one of these substrates, for instance, is a beta blocker. Well, if you've got a patient that's on beta blockers and then you put them on phenytoin, for instance, and their beta blocker, beta blocker level goes down, you're probably not going to see much change in the patient. Now, on the other hand, if you've got a patient who is on warfarin and they take a phenytoin, for instance, an inducer, you could certainly see something presenting uh, with that. Obviously, if, if their, their warfarin levels drop and it's subtherapeutic, uh, their INR is going to be below where we want it to be, and they're going to be more likely to clot. So with any of these inducers, what it causes is the level of one of these substrates to go down. Okay, so let's see how this would show up on the exam. So we have a 28-year-old woman who's confirmed to be pregnant. She says she doesn't know how it's possible because she's been on oral contraceptives for the last six years. Which of the following drugs, if added to her regimen, may have reduced the efficacy of her medication, of her, uh, of her oral contraceptives? So A, omeprazole, B, fluconazole, C, phenytoin, D, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, or E, metronidazole. Okay, so... When it comes to these questions, they are fairly straightforward. What they're telling you is that you got a patient on a drug, one of these substrates that use the P450 system, they went on some other drug and something happened. And that something was either related to the drug, the original drug being too high in level or being too low in level. And so when the medication in question drops too low, uh, then we know that what the patient was on was an inducer. So what, what happened here? She was on oral contraceptives, she was put on some new drug, and her oral contraceptive level must have dropped too low because she got pregnant. We could easily also say that she was on um, an antipsychotic and now she's presenting with, with a psychotic episode. Or she was on warfarin and she presented with a clotting episode. In any of those cases, what happened was she was put on a new medication and that new medication caused one of those substrates to drop too low. You know then that the new medication was an inducer. So when you get a question like this on the exam, what you need to know then is which one is the inducer. And conveniently, if you know your inducers and your inhibitors, all you're really going to be asked for is which of the following is not like the other, right? So if you watch the video that I put together on the inhibitors, you'll know that all of these are inhibitors except for phenytoin. And so that has to be it. The, the phenytoin caused her level of oral contraceptives to go down because it revved up the P450 system. The rest of these are indeed inhibitors. So they would actually cause her contraceptive levels to go up. Now, we would typically not see that as a presentation because 
it, you don't really see anything as far as an overdose of oral contraceptives. But as we're going to see when we talk about the inhibitors, there are P450 substrates where you can certainly have a presentation with an overdose. Think of something like having too much warfarin on board. You could get bleeding or too much beta blockers on board. You could get hypotension and bradycardia. Uh, so th this is typically how these questions are asked. And again, you really just need to memorize this and understand why inducers cause drug levels to drop and why, as we're gonna see when we talk about inhibitors, why inhibitors cause drug levels to go up.